right.
C'était le premier jour de la session plénière. J'étais seule dans mon nouvel espace et j'ai pu écouter les hommages qui lui ont été rendus. Mais au-delà de ce que j'ai pu entendre, c'est l'ambiance tout entière qui était particulière dans le bâtiment ce jour-là. Je ne parle pas des gens, mais de la structure elle-même, comme si les murs étaient en deuil. Era visible anche nelle foto. Comunicava con tutto, comunicava con le parole, con i gesti, con la sorriso. Ai suoi occhi che è vero che è come se sempre vedessero un pochino più al di là di quello che stava dicendo. Dobbiamo recuperare lo spirito dei padri fondatori. E nel momento che dijera l'onorevole Sassoli, lo pude evitar e sbozzar una gran sorrisa. Dandoci un progetto capace di coniugare pace, democrazia, diritti, sviluppo e uguaglianza. Lui è proprio l'esempio del politico. Un politico deve essere un legame tra il popolo, la gente e poi il mondo politico e far passare i messaggi. E lui era veramente così. Perché quando la politica si allontana dalla vita delle persone, beh, anche le democrazie possono subire dei contraccolpi molto forti. Je pense qu'il était effectivement plus, plus proche, plus, enfin plus, plus concerné, plus humain, peut-être simplement. Questa sua modalità di vero ascolto con interesse è, è singolare. People had the same importance to him. Poteva andare da tutte le parti, si fermava, salutava. C'era questa facoltà di adattarsi in ogni contesto. Lui era un grandissimo comunicatore. He was just uh, meaning what he was saying and trying to board the entire parliament with him. Per lui l'importante non era fare un bel discorso per il tweet o per la foto politica di turno. Quando chiedeva un action uh, si faceva. Non dobbiamo fermarci e dobbiamo avere un parlamento che non fa fermare la macchina. We gotta go on. However, hybrid, uh, remote, whatever, we cannot shut the parliament down. Non riesco a immaginare un parlamento, naturalmente, senza staff, senza deputati, fatto solo di incontri e di riunioni virtuali. Abbiamo bisogno di stimolare il contatto, la vicinanza. Io credo che lui soffria la decisione di de, de un giorno per l'altro de mandarnos todos a casa, esa fue muy difícil. Dobbiamo essere un po' instancabili per difendere la democrazia, i nostri valori, non possiamo permetterci pause. Ha creato delle iniziative tipo call shelter. Chi ouvre le portes d'un bâtiment vide et qui met à disposition des gens, que ce soit les cuisiniers, les chauffeurs, alors oui, je trouve que c'est admirable. Questo pure lo sforzo ai colleghi del Parlamento. Così avevano l'impressione di far parte pure di questo progetto. Abbiamo sulle nostre spalle la responsabilità di far funzionare una grande macchina, una macchina della democrazia, come quella del Parlamento europeo e ognuno di noi deve sentirne su di sé una parte perché ognuno è importante. Dà la possibilità di credere che se ognuno fa bene la sua parte le cose funzioneranno e questa cosa diventerà grande. È stato solo rimanendo attivi che alcune tentazioni sono state allontanate e lo abbiamo visto anche nel contesto internazionale con coloro che hanno promosso l'idea che con l'autoritarismo tutto sarebbe più facile. Difficult. Many record were done from the hospital. He was putting a nice jacket. Yeah, really the will to do his best, but his at most best. I medici adesso stanno lavorando per consentirmi eh, di tornare al più presto ai miei impegni. Even in January, he told Lorenzo on the phone, no, but I'll be in Strasbourg. He was really planning to, to get there. Non dobbiamo paura di avere coraggio, perché le sfide della contemporaneità sono molteplici. La democrazia in America è la democrazia in Europa, è la democrazia in Ucraina, 
è la democrazia in Bielorussia. Tutti noi sì, insieme resisteremo agli attacchi dall'esterno e dall'interno solo se ci difenderemo e proteggeremo a vicenda. Dobbiamo continuare a camminare insieme. His smile lit up every room. He always had a word of kindness for everyone. And the European Parliament is here to honor him, his legacy, and with a message that we will continue with that legacy for the future. C'è un cambio, è un vento nuovo e noi questo vento dobbiamo capire. E immaginare come sarà il mondo e come noi potremo avere un impatto su di esso.
dear Roberta, dear students uh, of uh, the David Sassoli promotion, dear mayor, dear governor, dear guests, uh, there is a background applause going on. <laughs> Uh, welcome, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot one important component, dear participants of the European Diplomatic Academy, uh, and uh, also uh, dear uh, friends, family, colleagues uh, of David Sassoli that are with us today. It is for me a special, very special moment today uh, to uh, have this official opening of our uh, promotion that is dedicated to David. I'll say a little bit more of that in a moment. But first of all, I would like to, first of all, congratulate all of you for getting at this stage, having been selected as students of the College of Europe in Bruges. Uh, you see where you get if you successfully go through the college. Uh, and also, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, Roberta for being here with us today. It's really an honor for us uh, uh, to have you here uh, as the president of the European Parliament, but also as an alumna of the college. Let me immediately uh, give the floor to uh, our, um, I would say somehow, uh, host, because uh, uh, here we are in the beautiful city of Bruges, in the beautiful province of West Flanders, that you already had the chance uh, to know, because uh, in these first weeks uh, in Bruges uh, and in this uh, uh, beautiful province, uh, I'm sure you have enjoyed uh, and tasted uh, the beauties and uh, the excellent uh, um, offers that uh, uh, the city and the province have uh, to share with us. I, I'm sure that you already feel at home here. Imagine how you will feel at the end of your stay. So let me please uh, uh, thank enormously not only for being here today, but also for the hospitality and the way in which the city and the province welcome the college community. Um, let me give the floor uh, to the mayor and the governor for their welcoming remarks. Mr. Mayor, you have the floor. Thank you. Mrs. Mezzola, President of the European Parliament, Mrs. Frederica Mogherini, Rector of the College of Europe, Mr. Governor Karl de Calvi, Professors and NVTs, uh, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, I want to bid you all a very warm welcome to Bruch. For the students, it's already the second time in less than one month that we meet each other. I do believe that uh, they recognize already the smell of the Bruges chocolate and the taste of the Bruges Fool, or our famous beer, the Bruxesot. I strongly believe that uh, they have already learned a lot about the history of our city, but also about our current affairs. For example, the fact that we have normally 8.3 million visitors a year, that we have, together with Antwerp, a strong growing port, which is our gate to the world, and that we have in our city two football teams, of which one plays an important role in the Champions League. I really hope that you, have already, that you feel already at home in our city. Especially, I'd like to welcome the President of the European Parliament in our city. We are indeed very proud to have the College of Europe, Europe within our city walls. The presence of the College is a great honor for Bruges. Two weeks ago, I also had the pleasure to welcome the first young diplomats of the European Diplomatic Academy. The European Council chose the College of Europe in Bruges to host this new diplomatic training. A great honor for, us, for the school and for our city, since we had to compete against big cities such as Paris, The Hague and Berlin. And this is not to say that Bruges is not a big city, because we are. Bruges is a world city in pocket size. Our city has a long, rich history. During the Middle Ages, we became a trading center that attracted people from all over the world. This diversity is what made our city so great, and we still hold diversity in high regard. This is also one of the, main, the many reasons why Bruges is the perfect place for the College of Europe. People from all over the continent 
gather here, just like they did 100 years ago. And during those hundreds of, hundreds of years, our continent faced many challenges, just as it is today. The pandemic took its toll. The war in Ukraine is still ongoing. There is an energy crisis, and the situation in Iran is dire. We cannot ignore the climate change in Europe, but especially in the continents where people are so poor to survive the, the catastrophes. We need strong-minded people to tackle these challenges and to find solutions. And for this, I look to you. Students of the College of Europe, I wish you a wonderful time in Bruges. I hope you will gain knowledge here to face future challenges with courage, vision, wisdom, and determination. We are very proud to have you as guests in our city. Enjoy your time here and know that you will be always welcome in our city in Bruges. You know that when everything goes well during the next eight months, you will become citizen of Bruges honoris causa. In the meantime, I promise you to be your mayor and your protector at least until the end of June 2023. Thank you very much. President of uh, the European Parliament, Roberta Mezzola, Rector Mogherini, Mayor Defoe, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, you students of the David Sassoli promotion. C'est un grand honneur d'être parmi vous pour assister à l'ouverture de l'année académique du mondial, mondialement renommé Collège d'Europe à Bruges, capitale de la province de Flandre Occidentale. As governor, I am particularly pleased with the presence of the College of Europe within the provincial borders. And I am sure that the pleasure is mutual. The benefits are mutual as well. And the provincial government is actively involved in the management of the College of Europe and is offering meaningful financial support to the college. It is also an honor to have the college in our province. As the government of West Flanders is very active in the field of international and European cooperation. And I am convinced that the College of Europe can play a significant supporting and reinforcing role in the further development of the province's European policy. Chers étudiants, c'est un réel plaisir pour moi de faire découvrir notre province à une élite de jeunes talents internationaux. Vous connaîtrez ainsi nos nombreux atouts et trouverez des raisons de créer des liens durables avec la Flandre occidentale. The province of West Flanders is in a unique position. We have a unique location. We are the only Flemish province to have a border with France to the south, as well as an extensive border with the Netherlands to the north and a maritime border that connects us with the UK and large parts of the rest of Europe and the world. It's all just a stone's throw away. Internationalization is clearly a part of our DNA. From education, research, and economic development to environment, sustainability, agriculture, from mobility and spatial planning to quality of life and tourism. There are cross-border European and international influences on our daily lives. This, however, poses an excellent opportunity to cooperate with neighboring countries, European partners, and international organizations. Cette dernière année, elle a acquis une vaste expérience dans l'utilisation de fonds européens sur son territoire. La Provence joue ici une rôle importante de passerelle. Elle informe, sensibilise, 
accompagner et dynamise divers partenaires et constituer un lien essentiel entre l'Europe, la Flandre, le gouvernement local et les citoyens. Les projets réalisés sont la preuve que les ressources européennes peuvent faire la différence dans une région. Au niveau de la transition énergétique, la Provence priorise le développement d'une industrie verte et la production de l'énergie durable est propre. En outre, la Provence de Flandre occidentale joue un rôle non négligeable dans la politique d'information européenne. Depuis la création d'un centre d'information Europe direct, la Provence, en collaboration avec le ministère des Affaires étrangères et la Commission européenne, informe et sensibilise le grand public, des groupes cibles, spécifiques et les différents niveaux d'enseignement sur l'Union européenne et ses atouts. Madame Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, announced in her State of the Union that 2023 will be the year of skills to strengthen our competitiveness, better focus on investments, cooperate with companies and match this needs with people's aspirations as well as attracts talents. And as Flanders, we prioritize the expansion of knowledge and expertise at all levels, from a child on its first day at the preschool to a PhD graduate working on groundbreaking innovative research in the state of Ortlap. Did you know that no less than 60% of the European purchasing power is located within a 500-kilometer radius of the province of Flanders? Did you know that if the vegetables on your plates were frozen at some point in time, changes they are coming from the province of West Flanders. Did you know that entrepreneurs in West Flanders region are developing revolutionary synthetic textiles and materials, producing blue energy, and playing a very important role in the creative industry and the media sector and the gaming sector? And during the academical year, our province invites you to discover these realizations. So please connect and remain connected with West Flanders. We hope that you all will become ambassadors of this province and once you are graduated and professionally active, will represent West Flanders. This way, not only the college, but also its students contribute to the international image of our province. Ladies and gentlemen, je souhaite pour tout le monde ici présent une année européenne fructueuse et enrichante. J'espère que votre séjour ici, en Flandre occidentale à Bruges, sera une période qui restera ancrée dans votre cœur durant votre carrière, bien évidemment d'une façon positive. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Dear Rector Mogherini, thank you for your invitation to take part in today's ceremony. Dear President Metzola, dear President Van Rompuy, dear Governor De Calue, dear Mayor De Fou, dear professors and staff members, distinguished guests, dear students, it gives me great pleasure to talk to you today. It is a very special occasion opening a new remarkable chapter in your life, a new beginning bringing new hopes new opportunities to build on your achievements and form new lasting bonds with your fellow students. Congratulations to all of you for seizing this opportunity. This is indeed the moment to study at the College of Europe. The Russian war in Ukraine challenges freedom, peace, justice, solidarity, democracy and all European values we all believe in, cherish and care for. This is a great challenge for Europe, and your opportunity lies in this very challenge. As times of crisis and hardship are also times for growth and development. It is a moment in European history when fundamentals are questioned, and you are to give new answers, find new perspectives, and develop new ways of seeing. This sounds like a great responsibility, and it is. However, you are on the right path. 
the College of Europe is possibly one of the best places to get prepared. This is a place with great know-how in delivering new knowledge and in maturing existing one. The college is also known for the everlasting human ties that every promotion forms here and nourishes them way beyond what will be an intense but formative year for you. Let this experience become a source of your bearings for wherever life will take you. Dear students, each one of you represents potential for your societies, for your countries and for Europe. That is, paraphrasing Zygmunt Bauman, an unfinished adventure. So work to increase it. Let your mind examine. Think and rethink. Don't surrender to presumptions. Be critical and dream of a greater tomorrow. But remember, tomorrow starts today. Thank you. Cara Alessandra, caro Giulio, Livia, amici e compagni di lavoro di David, dear mayor, governor, guests, participants to the European Diplomatic Academy, colleagues of the College of Europe Administration, faculty, dear students of the Sassoli Promotion, and cara Roberta, thank you. Thank you, first of all, for being here. Thank you for joining our college community as we officially inaugurate our academic year, 22-23, in what is probably one of the most difficult, if not the most difficult year for our continent. And it's a bit scary because I'm afraid I've said the same last year and the year before, that that would have been probably the most difficult year for Europe. And yet we could not imagine that after all the crises Europe has gone through, from the Eurozone crisis, the financial crisis, the terrorist attacks on European soil, the effect on climate change on our continent, the pandemic, we had to face also war in our century, in our millennium on European soil. And this highlights even more the importance of the European Union and what your contribution to the European Union is and will be. But thank you also for joining our college community as we dedicate our academic year to David. In January this year, immediately after he left us far too soon, we received uh, hundreds of messages asking to nominate David Sassoli as the patron de promotion of the College of Europe for the academic year 2022-23. Students, alumni, faculty and staff of all nationalities and backgrounds, and by the way, he would have loved this participatory way of choosing our patron de promotion, they all wanted, they all asked to honor and thank the man, the European, the president of the European Parliament, and rightly so. David was, for many of us, a friend but also and always a guiding light, a compass of lucidity, integrity, wisdom, and humanity. A brave, honest, gentle European, proud and humble, able to listen and to connect with each and every person he found on his way. His smile is open, welcoming smile, was much more than just a smile. It was his identity card. It was even somehow, I think, a political statement. This smile that you see and you will see for the rest of uh, the promotion, but also for the rest of your life, I hope. This smile was saying that no matter how harsh the words could have been, and he was able of very harsh words when needed, no matter how profound the disagreements could have been, still he was and stayed open. He was listening. He was trying to understand and making his best to be understood. 
with humility, respect, but also with the strength of his beliefs and values. This smile was telling to anyone he met that he was welcoming the person, the human being, before and beyond diversities and divergences. His eyes, his mind, his heart were always open to others, all others without any distinction. David was afraid, a friend, I said, and this is how I felt and how I feel. But I know that uh, there are hundreds, probably thousands of persons in this room and out there in Italy, in Europe, across the world, that feel exactly the same, that they have lost a friend, because he was a friend of many, very diverse individuals. This was his gift, his talent, and his strength. This doesn't mean that everybody liked him, not at all. Know that he liked everybody. There was no naivete in him, and for sure he would have never softened his positions to please someone. Having been a journalist and a very good one, an excellent one, he knew how to choose his words in the most powerful manner. He was always clear, unequivocal, easy to understand. If he thought that something was wrong, he was just saying it and then doing all he could to change it. There was no compromise possible with him on values, on democracy, human rights, and rule of law, on equality and social justice, on peace, international cooperation, and respect of the rules-based international order. There were the foundations of his identity and of his being European. And obviously not everybody liked this, inside and outside of the European Union. But even those who didn't share his ideas and his actions still respected and admired him, and still do. Sincerely, I cannot think of anyone else having received so unanimous and uncontroversial recognition across the political spectrum, across institutions, but most importantly for him, across society at large. And he wouldn't have considered this as an element of individual personal pride. He would have considered this uh, unanimous recognition as a sign that still in the polarized world of today, there is some space for coming together, for respect. Coming together, finding or building common ground, unity in diversity. Without any hypocrisy, but with real commitment, this was for him the essence of the European Union, notre raison d'être. Et je ne peux pas trouver des meilleurs mots que les siens pour dire pourquoi il est notre patron de promotion au Collège d'Europe pour l'année académique 2022-2023. Permettez-moi de citer presque en totalité un article qu'il avait écrit pour la Revue de l'Union européenne juste quelques semaines avant de nous quitter. Le titre est « Nos valeurs ne sont pas négociables ». Je cite « À peine 76 ans se sont écoulés depuis la fin de la Seconde Guerre mondiale » et 32 ans depuis la chute du mur de Berlin. Des périodes synonymes de destruction, de pauvreté et de souffrance pour tous les peuples européens. La mémoire de l'histoire est un fardeau. Et malgré les belles formules de genre « plus jamais ça », c'est avec incrédulité que nous assistons en Europe à la résurgence des vieux démons, de l'antisémitisme, de la xénophobie, du racisme et du rejet de la différence, portés par de nouvelles vagues de nationalisme. Si l'Europe dans laquelle nous vivons aujourd'hui se porte mieux, nous le devons à ses conquêtes et à la détermination des millions de citoyens qui croient au projet de nos pères fondateurs. Il est de notre devoir moral et de notre responsabilité éthique de protéger tous ceux qui se battent au jour le jour pour la justice, qui exigent la transparence de la part des institutions, qui sont en première ligne pour assurer la libre information de tous les citoyens, qui lutte contre les régimes oppressifs qui restreignent nos libertés. C'est pour ces raisons que nous devons nous efforcer de défendre sans relâche notre demeure bâtie sur le pluralisme, 
la diversité et l'inclusion. C'est pour ces raisons que l'Union européenne s'engage activement à défendre la démocratie et les droits de l'homme, y compris dans ses relations extérieures et à ses frontières. La démocratie, la liberté et l'état de droit ne sont pas négociables. Les valeurs sur lesquelles repose l'Union européenne ne sont pas négociables. En ce temps difficile, certains pays, malheureusement aussi au sein même de notre Union, ont cru pouvoir remettre en cause les fondements démocratiques sur lesquels nos États ont bâti ce projet de paix, de coopération et d'amitié entre les peuples, l'Europe. L'Union européenne est une entité dotée de règles communes que nous avons tous acceptées volontairement à la faveur de l'expérience que nous avons acquise de la démocratie. Malheureusement, il ne faut pas aller bien loin pour se faire une idée concrète de ce que pourrait être notre Europe sans le droit de droit. Il suffit de penser au lauréat de prix Sakharov de ces dernières années, Svetlana Tikhonovskaya, leader de l'opposition démocratique en Biélorussie, se bat pour que le régime de Loukachenko ne viole plus le droit des citoyens, ne réduise pas la société civile au silence et n'utilise plus la répression comme moyen de contrôle au quotidien. Alexei Navalny a mené des vastes campagnes politiques contre la corruption du régime de Poutine, ce qui lui a valu d'être empoisonné et emprisonné. Comme eux, bien d'autres dans le monde se battent pour le droit de chacun. Nous ne les oublions pas. L'Union européenne est fondée sur les valeurs de la démocratie et des droits de l'homme. Lorsque les droits de l'homme sont remis en cause, lorsque la démocratie est en danger et que les fondements de l'état de droit sont ébranlés, nous avons besoin des plus courageux d'entre nous, défenseurs des droits de l'homme, syndicalistes, journalistes, blogueurs et professionnels de médias, artistes et éditeurs, tous ceux qui osent donner une voix à ceux qui n'en ont pas. Or, l'autoritarisme gagne du terrain même au sein de nos frontières, à l'intérieur de nos frontières. Au sein de notre grande famille, nous nous efforçons constamment de respecter les cultures, les mentalités, les histoires et les structures sociales de chaque pays membre. Mais nous ne pouvons en aucun cas céder sur certains principes et valeurs. Les pressions sur le système judiciaire, la pénalisation de l'avortement ou de l'homosexualité, les obstacles à l'information, la création de zones sans lesbiennes, gays, bisexuelles et transsexuelles ou la propagande discriminatoire ne sont pas des valeurs que l'Europe partage. End of quote. As you see, David was open, smiling, gentle and kind, but this doesn't mean he was compromising on what he believed was the essence of our democratic life. Also in this, I believe he is a guiding light for all of us in these awful times. He knew that uh, the most authentic and in the long run effective manner to counter a certain vision of societal and international relations that is based on conflict and aggression, the best way to be assertive in today's conflictual world is not by accepting that paradigm and trying to compete on the ground of power politics, but on the contrary, it's clarity of vision and consistency with our values and principles. For him, this was Europe's strength, democracy and being consistent with our values. Let me use again his own words. And now I quote uh, from a speech he gave one year before leaving us in January 2021, in the middle of the pandemic, where he joined our college community, unfortunately online because of the uh, restrictions, uh, the lockdown, um, at the opening of our conference uh, that we organized here uh, in Bruges uh, on, the conf on the future of Europe, virtually. In that occasion, in a long and very fascinating exchange that he had with our students and faculty, and I would invite you all to go and have a look at that. I did it and it was a strong experience. He said, I quote, Putin says democratic systems are outdated. No, I do not agree. Democracy can still preserve and build our freedom. If you have a paradigm that can keep together 
fundamental rights such as defense of freedom and dignity of individuals. This is a paradigm that is not often found around the world. Europe can be the reference for others, so we have a huge responsibility. Perhaps we are not proud enough, and this is one of our shortcomings. So many would like to be like us. We don't want to impose anything on anyone, but we want to be able to be proud of how far we've come in 70 years. Our countries have found peace, and perhaps today this might allow Europe to become a true instrument for peace in the world. Without wanting to impose anything on anyone, never. But so many admire the European construction that has been so difficult, so slow, but so important. We can be a beacon, an example, a point of reference for the rest of the world. And this could be, for us, the engine we need to go on, to raise the level of our pride in the EU project, because we need more Europe." End of quote. Yes, he was very proud of our union, never complacent, always vigilant on our own contradictions and shortcomings, and always aware of the responsibility of institutions. Democracy is fragile and needs to be taken care of, he said in that same speech here at the college. And he continued, everyone is talking of whether autocracy or democracy is more effective. If we let go of our values, we'll have abdicated our identity, and right now, our European identity is particularly important because crises need to be faced with full transparency. This is why democracy needs to be efficient. End of quote. He was gentle, not naive, open to others, but also extremely solid in his convictions. He was proud of our union and at the same time always aware of its limits, of the work needed to renew our democratic system and stay true to our ideals. He was a man of the institutions and of the people. This is why his institution was the European Parliament. And Roberta, our choice to have David as our patron de promotion is first and foremost a tribute to the institution he was serving and you are serving today. When uh, he opened the premises of the European Parliament to the people in need during the pandemic, he was doing the most natural thing for him. He was uh, literally putting the institutions at the service of the people, and in particular, of the ones that need it the most. As he said in his very last speech, recorded just a few days before leaving us. In that speech, he also celebrates Europe and hope just when hope on his own life was fading away. Because he was like this, thinking not of himself, but of the others, always. He said, uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You've already learned when an applause is definitely needed. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. He said, uh, hope is us when we do not ignore those in need, when we don't build walls at our borders, when we fight all forms of injustice. End of quote. Institutions have to serve people, he constantly said. And one of his main objectives has always been to connect institutions and citizens. Il écrivait dans l'article que j'ai cité tout à l'heure que la démocratie, je cite, est une conquête de tous les instants fondée sur la confiance des citoyens dans les institutions. Nous devons renouveler et reconfirmer cette relation chaque jour, la considérer comme notre meilleur investissement. End of quote. The same investment that he had made every day in his relation to the younger generations, something that Roberta is proudly and very effectively continuing. He loved exchanging with students. He would have loved being here, including here at the College of Europe. He loved learning from them, from you, and giving back some of his knowledge and wisdom. He believed in the power of education and in the power of young people. Il clôturait le même article que j'ai déjà cité en écrivant Aujourd'hui, je cite, 
Plus que jamais, il est urgent de regarder là où nous sommes et vers où nous voulons aller. Nous ne pouvons pas ignorer les leçons que nous enseigne l'histoire de notre continent et de nos ancêtres. C'est une histoire riche en pages glorieuses, mais remplie aussi de souffrances et d'horreurs. Il est absolument nécessaire de privilégier la connaissance, la mémoire, la culture et l'éducation. Nous sommes tous mis à contribution, en particulier les jeunes générations, qui sont les plus actives et les plus engagées politiquement pour dessiner l'Europe de demain. La beauté de l'Europe réside dans le débat, dans le progrès que nous accomplissons ensemble, dans la construction d'une démocratie aussi participative que possible. Je crois que telle était la volonté de notre Père fondateur et l'Europe d'aujourd'hui doit se montrer forte et résistante afin d'incarner à nouveau cet esprit d'innovation qui doit souffler sur nos consciences, sur nous tous, sur tous les citoyens européens. So somehow, he has left us before seeing the war on European soil, but I think he had seen it coming. He trusted you. He trusted younger generations to embody the spirit of innovation, as he said, that inspired the very beginning of the European integration process. And I'm sure that today he would have looked at you, so beautiful, so enthusiastic, so full of energy and joy, regardless of the difficulties of our times. He would have looked at you in this wonderful concert hall. He would have guessed your dreams, your frustrations, your worries, but most importantly, your aspirations. And he would have told you what he said in January 2021 to your fellow alumni of the Suarez promotion. He would have told you, don't be elite, be leaders. And this is, uh, these are the words, his words, to our students two years ago with whom I would like you to start your academic year and to start your journey, continue your journey to be good Europeans. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, this is our tribute to David. Thank you from his side, I think. Now, now it's uh, the moment to give you the floor. Uh, it is, uh, for me, really a pleasure every year and uh, an honor uh, to uh, invite on stage uh, two of the student representatives to address you, our guests, and to also introduce uh, our keynote speaker. And uh, before I invite them on the stage, let me say how appreciative we all are, not only myself, but all faculty and staff of the College of Europe, for their contribution to our community life. Uh, being a student representative is something special, it needs a lot of dedication and commitment, also a lot of time, and I would like to thank all the student representatives and all the students that have elected them for the contribution to this academic year. So, Dimitri and Emily, please, the floor is yours. Dear President Metzola, Rector, Mayor, Governor, Honored Guests, Fellow Students. Thank you, President Metzola, for sharing with us today this solemn moment of the opening ceremony of the new academic year. A new page in the history of the College of Europe and in our lives. On this momentous day for all of us, I've been given the honor of delivering a speech on behalf of the students of the College of Europe, Bruges Campus, Promotion David Sassoli. This is an incredible opportunity as we, students, 
who see ourselves as representing the future of Europe, are able to bring with our voices to the forefront key issues which are on our minds. Regarding the current challenges that the European Union faces and struggles with every day. It's doubly honorable and important for me to hold this speech in front of all of you as a Ukrainian citizen. Exactly eight months ago, on February 24, 2022, the world order was undermined by the war in Ukraine. During this period, the European Union has proven its commitment to its values, cohesion and steadfastness in its decisions, even during the most difficult crisis. The EU has also shown leadership in supporting Ukraine in its aspiration to join the European Union by granting it EU candidate status and thus opening a new chapter in Ukraine's history. Our esteemed guest, Ms. Roberta Mezzola, President of the European Parliament and alumna of the College of Europe, became the first of the heads of the institutions of the European Union who heroically visited the capital of Ukraine, Kyiv, after the start of the full-scale invasion of the Russian Federation into Ukraine, which marked the unconditional support of the European Union to Ukraine. We can observe every day, and this for the past eight months, how the European Union accepts refugees from Ukraine and provides them with all kinds of non-discriminatory support. All these steps of support and solidarity are incredibly important for Ukraine. Since back in 2014, Ukrainians decided to radically change the strategic path of the state in favor of European integration. And now Ukraine is fighting for its European future every single day. But despite all of the above, the question arises more and more often, also here among the students, what next? How can the EU continue to face such a challenge as the war in Ukraine and successfully deal with its consequences? One of these consequences is the global energy crisis, which has a particularly sensitive impact on the EU economy. But at the same time, it can also be seen as an opportunity for a faster transition towards green energy, saving energy and fuel consumption. After all, the fight against climate change is still one of the priorities on the EU agenda. Fighting such a challenge undoubtedly requires an unprecedented unity of all EU member states and their peoples to achieve a common goal. But the question arises how to achieve this at the political level. We, as students of the College of Europe, can already today contribute to saving energy during our studies here in Bruges by making simple but effective efforts. Changing the way we undertake routine tasks and go about our daily lives. It was on our promotion that this heavy challenge fell. But we should not be afraid of it. And on the contrary, with a proudly raised head, we will take the initiative and become an example for future students of the College of Europe. The commitment of each of us to this initiative to save and switch to green energy will contribute to minimizing the consequences of the energy crisis for the entire EU. We, as students representing the future of Europe, must take this responsibility upon ourselves with honor and during this academic year prove, first of all, to ourselves that we can change Europe for the better, be united in working together for benefit of peace and prosperity, support its values, promote a comprehensive ethics, and consider the opinions of all groups without distinction of any kind, such as race, color, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, 
national or social origin, property, birth or other status. Thank you and long live Europe. Dear Rector, dear Vice Rector, dear President of the European Parliament, distinguished guests and professors, dear students of David Sassoli Promotion, it is a great honor and joy for me to greet you as newly elected student representative. First, let us congratulate you for making it here to the College of Europe. It is an extraordinary institution, a place that offers a rich and multicultural learning experience. Here, we do not only study Europe, we live Europe. To be here is not only a privilege, but also a challenge. We must remember that we are here to grow, achieve our goals, strengthen our skills, and expand our knowledge. In this, we are not alone. Our college is a community of solidarity and support. We are speaking to you from our beautiful and sunny campus here in Natalie. We are proud that Natalin has been thriving for three decades and has continued to celebrate the diversity of Europe and its neighbors. It will be our pleasure to receive you here during the year. Particularly in these trying times, we must always remember to help and to support each other. The patron of our promotion, David Sassoli, is a symbol of solidarity and democracy. He fought his whole life for the European values. This is also the spirit of the college that we embody. Be courageous, be bold and stay true to yourselves. We wish you a wonderful opening ceremony. See you soon in Natalie. Dear President Metzola, Rector, Mayor, Governor, honored guests and fellow students, it is my greatest pleasure to share this very special moment of our college life with all of you today. Every promotion here at the college is unique. The David Sassoli promotion has found itself at a time where world events are evolving dramatically. And quite naturally, college students are deeply debating what our futures might be and how Europe is going to face the challenges ahead. But on the other hand, our promotion will also go down in college history because we are the first promotion to share our campus here in Bruges with the newly created European Diplomatic Academy. And we are pleased that you, the participants of this program, are here with us today. So thank you very much for sharing this with us. À présent, j'ai le privilège d'introduire notre invité d'honneur qui, il n'y a pas si longtemps de cela, siégeait encore dans cette assemblée. D'ailleurs, lors de mes recherches, j'ai retrouvé le yearbook de la promotion John Locke 2003-2004 du Collège d'Europe. Au travers de ce tome aux couleurs de Poudlard, je suis tombée sur euh, la biographie de notre invité. Et c'est ainsi que j'ai découvert que sans ces quelques années d'écart, nous aurions été voisines à Oudezac. <rires> Mais ça n'est pas tout. Ce bref passage met également en lumière la valeur des amitiés que nous lions pendant notre séjour au collège, et l'ambition d'une carrière florissante qu'il faut sans cesse s'efforcer de construire. Madame la Présidente Mezzola, votre présence aujourd'hui nous donne donc espoir d'atteindre un jour, comme vous, de grandes choses, 
ou pour paraphraser vos amis de l'époque, un travail sûrement très important. Oui, vous y êtes parvenu, et cela sans baisser les bras. Toujours tourné vers l'Europe, votre parcours en témoigne car, après deux premières tentatives, vous vous êtes fait une place au sein de l'hémicycle européen. Et quelle place Madame la Présidente du Parlement européen, vous êtes aujourd'hui la troisième femme à exercer ces fonctions depuis que cette institution est élue au suffrage universel. Vous êtes également la première représentante de ce que l'on appelle souvent un petit pays. C'est donc un message de persévérance que vous partagez avec nous aujourd'hui. Depuis 1979, le Parlement représente la démocratie européenne. Première présidente de cette nouvelle Assemblée, Simone Veil s'était tenue devant les étudiantes et les étudiants du Collège d'Europe un an après sa prise de fonction, un peu comme vous aujourd'hui. En effet, en ce début d'année 2022, vous avez succédé à David Sassoli, notre patron de promotion dont nous saluons la mémoire en ce jour. Vous entrez donc dans cette grande histoire de la construction européenne à l'heure où les défis portés à l'Europe se révèlent immenses. Madame la Présidente, il n'est pas temps pour moi de vous laisser la parole car nous sommes toutes et tous impatients de vous entendre et de connaître votre vision. Au nom de la promotion David Sassoli, je vous remercie d'être parmi nous ce matin. I need to take this. I had lost it. So good morning, everyone. Thank you, merci, Emily. Thank you, Dimitrio, dear rector. Dear Vice Rector, dear Cara Alessandra, Familia di the David, dear students of the David Sassoli promotion, dear Mayor, dear Governor, let me start by thanking you, dear Federica, for inviting me to address you here today. I cannot think of a better rector for this group of students and this college in such a difficult and challenging time for Europe and particularly for giving me the opportunity and privilege of honoring the legacy of the 2022-2023 College of Europe Academic Year Patron of Promotion, my predecessor and my friend, David Maria Sassoli. David was a champion of democracy, a passionate European and a fighter for Europe. He believed unreservedly in the power of Europe to forge a new path in this world. And in doing so, he fought hard to bring people around the same table. I was one of those people. His legacy is one that I carry with me as president of the European Parliament every single day. And in these troubled times, I often find myself looking over his speeches and his words to find a way through, because the world could use more of his clarity of principle. David had a vision of a more united Europe, one that was closer to people, one that was more authentic to its values, values of human dignity, freedom and solidarity. A distinguished writer once said, Great lives are those in which people feel a calling, have a sense of a vocation. David felt that calling, that sense of service, which he delivered on always with a smile. Although when he was unimpressed, he would make it very clear too, with all of us. That is the responsibility that I must carry on as his successor but one that you all must carry to. That is now on your shoulders. That is the privilege that you have. You are the class of David Sassoli. Be inspired by his example. And I know that you will honor him and honor yourselves by going out and making the world a better, fairer and more just place by respecting the values of humanity 
and by reaching out to the most vulnerable, by standing up for the principles of Europe, as David did. I must say that returning to Bruges, to the college here, is particularly moving for me. Not only because it is my alma mater, and thank God for no Instagram at that time. <laughs> I will tell you I was part of the John Locke promotion. Few experiences, I'm gonna go off my speech now. I've just written them. What do I remember from there? I was proud to live in Audazak. How many of you live in Audazak? I was a little bit less proud of living in one of those top rooms where you needed to go upstairs to go to, the, to your bed or to the bathroom, especially after a long night out, and it had been raining. When it was raining, we didn't used to go to Oliban because we thought it was too far away. But we always found the time to go to the so-called John Locker Bar in Haudenhand, where I must say, we spent a lot of time. Some of my best memories were the end-of-year parties. The Scandinavian one, the Nordic one, was the one we most remember. That was pretty brutal, I must say. <laughs> you know, Mr. Mayor, you said you will be pre their protector. The mayor at the time had to protect quite a lot of us who went to hospital on that night. <laughs> I improved my French. I could still improve it. We became good at negotiations. I regret not going to Natalin to visit. You should do it, as you have just been invited to. When you will be invited to each other's weddings, go. <laughs> we had, I just counted, 20 weddings from our, from our year. It was amazing, long time ago, but we still remember them. And we still meet. Another fun story. We had gone to the European Parliament and the Council to do, I don't know whether you still call it simulation, I think it's called, uh, so that when you, you be a representative of a country uh, and you need to negotiate your position. I had a particularly different, difficult country, I can't remember what it was, but I remember I did it and we put all our efforts into that negotiation. Whenever I pass through the two rooms in the Council, and in the Parliament, I don't remember the current boring meeting sometimes we're in. I remember those days when I was with my friends of the college and we were battling out for a Europe we believed in. Make sure you do that too. I must say what was not, the, what was not easy was I did all my exams in September in a reset session. My mother was not amused at all. <laughs> and the reason why this happened is because in May, a few days after my country joined the European Union, 1st of May 2004, I was called to run for the first elections of the European Parliament. Imagine my parents when I had to call them and say, I'm leaving the college for a couple of weeks. My mother said, why? You're going to ruin everything. You've studied so hard so much. <laughs> I said, I have been asked to run for the first European Parliament elections of my country, and I feel it is my duty to do so. And I did. I didn't get elected. I came back after the exams had been over. I hadn't done them. I came back just for the parties and the graduation. But I must say, it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Less amazing when I came in September to do all the exams, but amazing experience to be able to run in a country that had just joined the European Union after so many years of promise, when we had witnessed the transformational effect of an accession process, which is why it was so important that we took a decision to accept Ukraine and Moldova as candidate countries for European Union membership. To do that, not get elected, 
do it again in 2009, not get elected, and then get elected finally, as my father said, in 2013. And I did that because I would like to show you and to tell you that politics is a force for good. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Being a member of the European Parliament is an amazing thing. When you are going to be faced with your friends and colleagues in 2024, I have one question for you or appeal. First of all, potentially run in elections and two, make sure you vote and the ones around you vote too. There is nothing worse than looking at elected representatives that do not represent you. Now I go back to my speech. So as a student, I got involved in politics because I believed that my generation's place was Europe. And I still believe exactly that because we are the generation that sees no old and no new Europe. We know no big and smaller states. We understand that Europe can function in a way that respects, as we've just heard from Dimitro, the diversity of opinions, ideologies, religions, languages and nations while remaining anchored in our core shared values. It is not always an easy balance to find, but in our Europe, it is the strength of your arguments that matter, not the volume of your voice. The depth of your integrity, not the number of short-term populist gains. This college taught me that. David Sassoli showed me that. And this, I believe, is a message that needs to resonate more, especially in this very dangerous time we are living in, where the democratic world order is under threat. Six months ago, on the 24th of February, the world changed forever. Russia's illegal and unprovoked war has fixated all eyes on Europe, and history will judge us by our response. And make no mistake, the proportionality, speed, and unity of our reaction plays into this response. I am proud that the European Union has provided financial, military, and humanitarian aid to Ukraine and its people. And we will continue to do precisely that. We have welcomed seven million women, children, and men into our homes and our hearts. We have adopted eight packages of sanctions to impede the financing of Russia's war machine. Now, we need to find that spirit again when we are called to face migration challenges, when we look at people as human beings rather than statistics, lives, not numbers. Today, when we recall the anniversary, as difficult as that word is, eight months ago, not six months ago, since Russia's tanks rolled into independent and sovereign Ukraine. In this time, we have seen brave Ukrainian men and women fighting for their country and their liberty. Defiant Ukrainian grandmothers learning how to defend their homes and their families. But we need to be clear, Ukrainian people are also risking their lives for Europe to safeguard the values that we all believe in, freedom, democracy, the rule of law, values that David Sassoli worked so hard to preserve and strengthen. And so it remains our duty to continue helping Ukraine and its people to make sure they ultimately win this war. It is what is right, it is what is necessary, it is what must happen. Dear students of this...
Dear students of the David Sassoli promotion, Europe has done a lot, but there is no time for complacency. We will be called upon to do yet more. And I know that with a war still raging at our borders, political instability, climate change, the rise of fake news, misinformation, high electricity prices and inflation increasing, young people are exposed to more uncertainty than many generations ever had to contend with. And so what Europe needs now, what the world needs now more than ever, our leaders. And here let me say that being elected is not simply what makes you a leader. Being a leader is someone who is ready to serve and who is ready to stand up for what we believe in, who will not shy away from difficult discussions and decisions, who is honest about our failings and the frustrations of our processes but who's also honest about our union's achievements, and here we have had quite a few. There is virtue in leadership as there is in service. Politics, for me, has always been a force for good because it is the best avenue for change. At its core, it is about strengthening our community, about leaving no one behind, about understanding that the common good is greater than the one of the individual, about realizing that we are not safe until we are all safe, and that the weakest, the most marginalized in our communities, are as much a part of our society as everyone else. So if you take one message from me today, it is this. Stand up, serve, lead. Stand up by making your voice heard, serve by being active, and lead on the issues that matter most to you, whether that is in politics, in local communities, in NGOs, in businesses, in academia, or in the arts. And if you encounter resistance, and you will, stand your ground, stand on Europe's ground, because our project is worth fighting for. I told you earlier about my first European elections and how difficult it was to get elected, how difficult it still is to stand in front of a group of people and tell them, hold me accountable, and that my election and the trust that you place in me means that I need to be able to face you again in five years' time on whenever a mandate ends and you will be able to judge me as to whether I have served and earned your trust or not. This is the best thing about democracy. This is the best thing about elections. And I am convinced that you are also up to the challenge. And in this upcoming year, you will receive the best, most rich and multicultural learning experience thanks to your professors and ac academics. You will not only study Europe, but you will live Europe too. Take full advantage of it because it will pass much quicker than you think. And I am convinced that together we can find a way forward that is fit for the next generation European leaders must unite and stand united to confront cynicism and stand firm against aggression. This is ultimately a question of political will. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I'm a lawyer and I know how easy it is to put forward legal arguments in order to say that something is not possible or something is. All it takes at the end of the day is political will. And that, I can assure you, that the European Parliament has. David Sassoli once said, the European Union is not an accident of history. He was right, of course. Our union is not an accident, but the tangible result of a group of visionaries. The ideas, efforts, 
and strength of the founding mothers and fathers of the world's greatest peace project. This is the bigger picture that we cannot lose sight of. They started the machinery and the responsibility lies squarely on us to keep it running. We need to come together like never before. This is Europe's time to lead. This is your time to lead. Thank you and have a good time.
Thank you, Clara. I would like to thank uh, all students that have accompanied uh, our opening ceremony, also with uh, the music, as well as the choir that is uh, coming on stage in just a minute. Sometimes I think uh, we might turn the college into a music academy. It could be a good. <laughs> we really have talented students. Uh, this is uh, uh, the end of the opening ceremony and the beginning or the continuation of uh, uh, your exciting journey. I would like to thank uh, the President of the European Parliament, uh, Roberta, for not only being here with us today, but also for sharing with you some memories. Uh, um, don't follow them all, uh, especially as the mayor has guaranteed you that he will protect you. Please keep that in mind. Um, and uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, the mayor, the governor, um, all our guests that have joined us uh, uh, today, and most of all you, our students of the David Sassoli promotion, for being part of the college family. And with this, as I invite the choir to come on stage for the Ode to Joy, I declare officially opened the academic year of the Sassoli promotion 2022-2023. <laughs>